You know, lately I've been getting the feeling that opportunists have been trying to find more and more ways to take away our essential liberty from us. Thomas Jefferson once said, those who would trade essential liberty for a little bit of immediate safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. I'm beginning to wonder if that actually describes us as a Canada and the United States as a society. Allow me to elaborate a little bit. I'm assuming everyone by now has heard about the Boston bombing, and they're still talking about who caused it and yada, yada, yada. Of course, uh, what I find most interesting is the timing between the Boston bombing and the passing of CISPA, the new Internet Security Protocol Act, um, basically which allows the, uh, the U.S. government for anybody coming into the country to type your name into a database, and if they find uh, um, your name with some keywords, they won't let you in. Um, the, the, it gives uh, spies the power to monitor, to, uh, ser- for police to search uh, databases without warrants pertaining to you, to give uh, charges for arrest. Uh, gives spies the power to monitor and censor the Internet in the United States, despite the fact that the United States had both condemned Russia and China for bringing on similar legislation. And Canada is facing a similar situation right now. I don't know for those of my American counterparts who've been hearing about the, uh, the fact that supposedly Al-Qaeda tried to create a plot to bomb two train stations up here in Canada. The people in question who were supposedly, uh, the, the plot was supposedly foiled, but the people who were arrested had not even put the plot into action. They just simply were arrested for supposedly plotting this. And now the current Canadian government, the parliament, is now debating a new bill called S7. What this would do is it would bring even stronger anti-terror legislation back to Canada. Uh, amongst some of the things it would do is it would um, allow the uh, it would allow um, police to detain someone for up to three days without charge. It would allow someone to be detained for 12 months for, for refusing to testify before a judge in an anti-terror case. And it would also forbid anyone from leaving the country to commit a terrorist act. Now, that should be self-evident anyway. But the point is the law actually puts this inscribed in stone, which basically means it forbids Canadian citizens from leaving the country if the government decides that whatever action they're doing happens to be a terrorist act. So if you get involved with a political group down in the United States for simple protesting, the government could deem that to be a terrorist act, and the next thing you know, you're forbidden from leaving your own country. I wonder if they'll actually apply that to refugeeing out of Canada. Another treaty which is gone out, which is currently going on right now, um, which I'm not sure if you Americans are aware of, but I know most Canadians are, it's called FIPA. It's um, basically an international protection. Uh, it's basically an international trade agreement between Canada and China, which de facto will make Canadians Chinese slaves. To be more specific, it will. Uh, one of the big provisions it will allow is it will allow China's uh, China's government or corporations to sue the Canadian government for trying to enforce Canadian law against Chinese corporations in Canada. They will be sued in secret tribunals in China. And as a result, uh, levies and uh, you know uh, levies and damages or what have you will be claimed by these uh, arbitrary arbitrarily by these Chinese courts, and they'll be able to enforce it on Canada. In other words, if Canada tries to stop and try to enforce Canadian law or liberty for Canadian citizens, next thing you know, taxpayers are having to pay a shitload of money to cut China for interfering with Chinese business in Canada. Harper signed this treaty without consulting Parliament. A debate was held this past uh, was held this past Monday. In, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the government at the, mo- um, at the behest of the NDP, and of course the conservatives and the liberals uh, voted down the motion to stop the treaty from happening. So it finally got ratified by Parliament, but because of the fact that Harper is a majority anyway, it was bound to happen anyway. What is my point with all of this? I suspect that the Boston bombing and the attempts on the uh, train stations in Canada are something that opportunists have been waiting for for a while. We haven't had a major terrorist attack since 9-11, uh, at least in North America, for some time, and you know the fact that the Obama government was, the Obama administration was trying to push, uh, and still is trying to push, for the North of the North of, uh, the National Defense Authorization Act to be approved by the Supreme Court, um, basically to allow detention of anyone uh, anywhere on the planet by the American military on suspicion of either being a terrorist or even being loosely affiliated with a terrorist organization, such as journalists trying to interview people who are deemed to be terrorists by the U.S. government. That was the whole reason the uh, the injunction got put on it in the first place. Um, you know, given the NDAA 2012, the uh, you know, uh, which is basically the successor to the Patriot Act, um, the Bill S7, which is basically replacing the anti-terror legislation, which got uh, destroyed by Bill C36 during the Sunset Clause uh, up here in Canada, and the FIFA Treaty and the CISPA law. You know, it, basically, it's like the American government, at the behest of whatever entities, is looking for opportunities to try to restrict our freedoms even more. 
And what are we doing about it? Practically nothing, it seems. Uh, you know, I mean, there, there is some protest, but everybody's so concerned about, oh, the Boston bombing, you know, what possibly happened? Now, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I feel for the, you know, I feel for the families that, you know, I, I think it was a travesty. But that being said, I think the appropriate response is honest police work and trying to bring the, you know, using conventional means, trying to bring the culprits to justice, not bringing in more anti, more stringent and draconian anti-terror laws, which destroy our democracy. You know, and what, you know, if, if, if Canada and the United States are, you know, which are supposed to be bastions of, uh, of fairness and democracy in, in the Western world, are following this, what's Britain going to do next to follow suit? What are France and Germany going to do next to follow suit? You know, and what with China being on the rise, uh, you know, in terms of economic plans, you know, it's like the, it's like the, it's like the, 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 the last vestiges of what actually protected people, in, you know, in, in true free markets and in true freedom in democracy are being destroyed. And what are we doing about it? Nothing. So is it any wonder I'm starting to lose faith in my fellow humanity, or at least my fellow, uh, at least my fellow North Americans? Seriously, people, we need to stop this now. We need to, not only do we need to be petitioning the governments to deal with these issues, closing Guantanamo Bay, stopping CISPA, stopping the, uh, you know, uh, stopping the NDAA 2012, stopping uh, the new S7 bill that, uh, that the, uh, um, you know, and stopping FIPA, not only do we not need to press the governments to stop this, we need to create a new system where we start boycotting corporations at large. We need to stop, you know, we need to stop promoting the status quo as usual. My father used to say business as usual is a suicide pact, and I hate to say it, but it looks like it's going that direction. So take it for what you will. This is purely my own opinion at this point, but I'm seeing democracy dying in our I'm seeing democracy dying in our respective countries of Canada and the United States. I'm seeing it dying in some other ways worldwide. And you know I really don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to do about it anymore. So what are your guys' thoughts on this? You know, post your thoughts in the comments below on what needs to be done about our current problems and how do we actually address these uh, problems that are, uh, that are encroaching on us. Um, you know, do you think that the Boston bombing was a misdirection? Uh, or sorry, to be more specific, do you think that the Boston bombing is being used as misdirection? Um, or do you think that CISPA and, anti and other anti-terror legislation is appropriate way to respond to the Boston bombing? You know, do you actually support the, uh, the, the apparent... Um, removal of democracy or is there some other reason why this is not removal of democracy you know post your opinions in the comments below what do we do about this i'm signing off